Hi, I'm Karen Akunowitz from Fox and the Knife in Bar Volpe, and I'm here to make lamb asabuco with saffron risotto and gremolata. So we're gonna start off by marinating our lamb shanks. We'll have some pieces that are a little bit bigger, some pieces that are a little bit thinner, but that's okay, they're all gonna braise at the same temperature. Asabuco is a really traditional dish from the Lombardy region in Italy. And what I like to do is I like to take this and I give it a little bit of a Middle Eastern twist or a little flair. It's a beautiful combination and you just get a little bit different flavor. So I'm gonna start by adding all of my chopped rosemary to the lamb and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to add my rose harissa and I'm just gonna get in there with my hands and we are going to make sure that all of our little lamb shanks are completely coated. There we go. So we're just gonna take this, we're gonna pop it over here and we're gonna let that hang out while we work on the rest of the dish. One of the things I love about braising as well as making risotto is that as a really young cook, they taught me patience. Yes, you want to stir it, but you also have to learn to let it sit and let it hang out. I didn't start cooking until I was in my 20s. My mom liked to say before that that I couldn't even boil water. And I started cooking to impress a girl. I went out, I like bought a cookbook, I went to Whole Foods, I spent more money on groceries that I had ever than I had ever spent. What, what did you make? I made um, pasta a la puttanesca. But I think it was very bad. But I made it and I thought I was just amazing. And that feeling of cooking for somebody else, of making something, was a big part of why I started cooking. Did the puttanesco work? Well, you know, we were together for three years. We had a cat and a joint bank account. So I would say that's, you know, that's working out in terms of what working out means in life. So really this whole career that I've built over 20 years, it's really just about my dating life. <laughs> okay, so we have diced up all of our mirepoix, and we're gonna go ahead and start the mirepoix in this beautiful Dutch oven. Now, one of the things I'll say, this is one of the few recipes where I do not sear the meat first. If you tried to sear the lamb with the harissa marinade, the harissa is going to burn. I like to start my mirepoix by toasting my garlic first, and I like it to get nice and golden brown. And one of the things I always say, you want happy, dancing garlic. It smells beautiful, it's dancing in the pan, and when it gets nice and beautiful and toasty like that, once you add your other mirepoix to the pan, once you add other ingredients to the pan, it takes away some of the heat and you're not going to burn that garlic. I typically start with the celery to get a little bit of heat on it. It has the least amount of sugar of the next three vegetables, so it um, needs a little bit more time to caramelize. Then I start with the carrots. The onions have the most sugar, so I throw them in last. So the next thing I'm gonna do is make sure that our mirepoix is nice and seasoned. So I've got some kosher salt, I've got some cracked black pepper. And remember, not adding anything else to this right now, but we are going to have all of that harissa and all of that rosemary in the braise from the lamb. This is just gonna hang out until we get a little bit of caramelization on it. We are gonna add a little bit of tomato product to this braise. It's gonna add some acidity, it's gonna add a little bit of sweetness, it's gonna add a little bit of body, and we're gonna mill those tomatoes. Um, if you don't have a food mill at home, sometimes when I don't wanna do dishes, I will just, I'll just squish the tomatoes with my hands, and it's totally fine. It'll be a tiny bit more rustic. Now you see that? We've got all of like the goodness, the deliciousness of the San Marzano tomatoes, Perfect, it's a perfect consistency. We're starting to get some really nice color on our mirepoix now. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna add our red wine uh, and we're gonna add our tomato. We're gonna cook that down a little bit. In the same way that we would, if we had seared the lamb, we would add the wine and we would scrape up all of the beautiful brown bits from the bottom of the Dutch oven. We're gonna do that, we're gonna scrape up all of the beautiful brown bits from the mirepoix. So we're really mimicking searing the, the meat ahead of time. We're just using the vegetables instead of the meat. Okay, so one of the ways that I can tell when the tomatoes and the wine have reduced enough is when you smell it and you don't get the alcohol smell from the wine. It's kind of cooked off and it's reduced a little bit and it's gotten a little thick, it's gotten a little bit jammy. So we're gonna go ahead and add the lamb to the pot and we're gonna add it so the little, the bone um, is sticking right up, and these are gonna sit just beautifully. And we want to make sure that we're not crowding it too much. This is one of my favorite parts about braising. It's like putting it to bed. So 
So I'm going to gonna season my lamb. Now this is something that I would have done ahead of time. So I'm gonna season it on the top. Because I didn't do it ahead of time, I season a little bit more aggressively. This is like a little trick. This is like if I did this at the restaurant, I would say, I would say to my cook like, do as I say and not as I do. All right, so I've got some chicken stock here. Now, if you happen to have some lamb stock hanging around, you could use lamb stock. I don't know if too many people, I don't keep lamb stock in my freezer at home. And we're gonna cover this so it is two thirds of the way up most of the lamb. We are gonna let this come back up to a simmer because we want the braise to be nice and hot when it goes into the oven. We're gonna pop it in the oven for two and a half to three hours. We're gonna check it about halfway through just to make sure we're on the right track, make sure it doesn't need a little bit more liquid. All right, so our lamb is bubbling and beautiful. And we're just gonna go ahead and cover that up and pop it in the oven. So while our lamb is braising in the oven, um, we are gonna start on our saffron risotto. This is a very traditional accompaniment to asabuco. I'm gonna start the risotto by dicing a small um, Spanish onion. Add a tablespoon or two, just to cover the bottom of the pan, um, of olive oil to start the risotto. And when I first learned to make it, I made a lot of really bad risotto. I think it's something that's really intimidating to people. The thing is, it's not that hard, to be completely honest. If you overcook it a little, it's still gonna be delicious. And if you undercook it a little, it's still gonna be delicious. So we're seasoning our onion. We're just gonna cook our onion until it's translucent. And the next step is we are going to add our rice and we're gonna toast our rice. Now we're using Arborio rice from the Ar Arborio region of Italy. This is a short grain starchy rice. So we are gonna toast our rice until it becomes translucent, um, and then until we smell it get a little nutty. Okay, so while that rice is toasting, we're gonna give it another minute or so. I'm gonna take our white wine, and I have some saffron here, gorgeous color. We are going to bloom the saffron in the wine. Now, you could also bloom the saffron in the chicken stock that we're going to use. You can always cook risotto with water. Make sure to season it, use some, some good cheese at the end, and it's still going to be delicious. Now, as you can see, immediately, the white wine starts to turn a beautiful golden color. That's the saffron sort of releasing its color, releasing its flavor, and that's gonna really help it incorporate into this dish. So I'm gonna go ahead, and for our first incorporation of liquid, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add that saffron-infused wine. And as you can see, the rice is just covered by that wine. So we're gonna wait until this absorbs. It's simmering. Once the rice becomes just not covered by the liquid, that's when we're gonna start with the addition of our chicken stock. I am going to start our gremolata. And we're gonna go ahead and add our first kind of addition of stock. Gremolata is typically just garlic, parsley, lemon, um, and it's a perfect foil for anything braised, anything grilled. But again, we're taking that little bit of Middle Eastern flair on the dish, and so perfect with lamb is adding ginger to the gremolata. We're gonna dice our shallots. I'm just kinda going to take the edges off of this ginger. If you want to make this a little bit easier, go ahead and use a microplane. I just mixed up my shallot and my ginger. So I'm gonna salt it first, and I'm adding some rice wine vinegar. And I'm just adding enough vinegar to cover the shallots and the ginger. And I'm gonna let this chill for a few minutes. We're gonna go ahead and chop our, our herbs. I've got Italian flat leaf parsley, I've got Thai basil, and I've got mint. I'm gonna give my friend a little spin over here. And because we've added, you know, we've added about a quart of chicken stock at this point, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna add a little bit more salt. So I kept my herbs in little separate bunches just because I'm going to really carefully chiffonade them. And even if I've got a few bigger pieces, that's gonna be totally fine. And we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna stream in our olive oil, add a little bit more salt. 
So I'm gonna add a little bit of butter. And you do wanna stir that butter in. And can you see this? Isn't that so beautiful? Ugh. I'm gonna come to your house and make this for every single one of you. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab my Parmigiano Reggiano. I'm kind of a freak about using a microplane for grating cheese. So it lands just like perfectly and melts on top of pasta. This risotto is perfect and good to go. I'm gonna taste it just to make sure our seasoning is great. Mm, perfect. And I'm so excited for this. Now, one of the things to notice here is, you know, I talked about braising it at a little bit of a higher temperature than I typically would. Um, and you can see right here that we've got like that beautiful darkening, that beautiful caramelization because we braised it at a little bit higher temp because we didn't sear it ahead of time. But we're still getting that gorgeous, gorgeous color on the lamb. So let's plate our dish. And there you have our very traditional, untraditional lamb asabuco with saffron risotto and ginger garmalata. Okay, here's the, here's the true test. Is it braised all the way through? Oh my God, this is just falling apart here. Mm, this is such a perfect dish. It's so flavorful, the textures are so great. You can taste the harissa, you can taste the saffron. They all play beautifully together. Nothing, no one flavor overwhelms. They're all just beautifully melded together. If you guys want the recipe, click on the link below and come up and visit me in Boston at Fox in the Knife or Bar Vault Day. What I do when I don't feel like doing extra dishes or what? <laughs> and I'm done. I was like, what did I do? What did I do? I didn't go for the white eyelet.